Hello everyone, welcome back. This is Susie, and if you're new to the channel, welcome here uh, to Dragonfly Bee's resale journey. In this video, I am going to show you some of the pieces that I had shown in that preview. And let's start off with, with these. This is a vintage bracelet, and it's made up of rhinestones, these beautiful white little flowers and there are some rhinestones that are uranium glass now let me tell you about uranium glass um it's also known as vaseline glass yeah that kind of sounds weird um the reason why it was called um vaseline glass also is because it was like a it's like a green yellow color but vaseline glass is more of like a yellow color that basically looks like petroleum jelly and it's sometimes called canary glass so uranium glass yeah it's slightly radioactive but it's so minute that it doesn't pose a threat if you display it like for instance you know of uranium glass um more so in glassware bowls plates pitchers but don't confuse uranium glass with depression glass because depression glass doesn't glow so let me um talk about uranium glass it was well let's see it began in the mid 1800s all the way to the beginning of uh, world war ii and it was most popular from the 1880s up to the 20s. There were two companies. One was called Fenton. The other one was called Moser or Moser, whatever. And um, let's see. During World War II, the government confiscated all the supplies, the supplies of uranium. And all production was halted in 1943. So the ban was finally lifted in 1958. So 1958, 1958 on, uh, uranium glass was being made again. But it was limited because it was expensive to get uranium glass, which is uranium dioxide. And sometimes they would add iron oxide, which is another word for rust, <laughs> uh, to it, that would make it look more green. So I don't know if you realize it, but if I were to leave these two bracelets out in the light, they will re-radiate. Is that a word? Re-radiate? Or fluorescent on its own. So, all right, let's take a look at these a little bit closer. Um, this here, well, first of all, I acquired these in a, a local estate sale uh, some time ago. In fact, I had them in a box and I may have gotten it like last summer and I, I really forgot about it. Um, so this bracelet, I would say maybe it's from the 50s. And you look at it closer, you have these beautiful white flowers, and I think they're metal. And there's rhinestones in these multi-colors. The one problem with this is, um, I found, or oh, I bought it as is. You see right there? One rhinestone is missing. So that needs to be replaced. This here is on a gold tone setting. Here's the back of it. It's very old. So it does show significant wear on the back. You see some of these are, are welded together. So they look like a, like an eight. See right there? Yeah, there is wear. This does have a hidden clasp, which is very nice. And it goes in like so. Um, Let's try to pop that in, and yeah, it pops in very nicely. Uh, let's open that and measure this. So this one, I'm guessing seven. 
Uh, no. With this hidden, this is only six and a half inches. So, that would fit me perfectly. So we have this. Now, let me, um, let me shut the light. I mean, I don't have to shut it completely. But if I do that, you will see that the uranium uh, glass rhinestones are sporadically around the bracelet. Yeah, so there's three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Isn't that the greatest color of green? So we have this. And while I have the light off, let me show you this one. Um, let me glow onto it. This one has three, four, five. This one has five uranium glass beads. Yeah, they were purchased um, at the same time. In fact, this was a lot. So this one here is more like a tennis bracelet style. It's very delicate. Same colors of that, like pastels. This one has a spring ring clasp. Here's the back side. And measuring this one, Let's see what this is. This is approximately, oh, seven and a, almost seven and a quarter, not quite. So I would say seven, seven inches in length. So we have these two. Now at the same estate auction, I got these. I guess the, the woman, of the home really liked her colors and bracelets. These two are by Joan Rivers. One is a pink rhinestone. One is that multicolor one. Um, it is marked Joan Rivers somewhere. Um, yeah, right there. It's probably upside down. <laughs> um, hmm. Well, that's where it does say it. I can't even see it. Let me grab the uh, magnifier. And there you see it says Joan Rivers, uh, made in China. And... It should say that on here too. Hmm. Yeah, that one does say Joan Rivers a little differently. All right, so let's measure the length of these two. The pink one, oh, they also have this, um, the safety clasp. They each do. Now this one is a really nice pink crystal rhinestone channel set. This one measures, I would say seven and a half inches. And then this one is that beautiful multicolor one. And this one looks to be the same, but let's be sure. So this one here, yeah, it is a, a seven and a half inches as well. So we have these two. Joan Rivers bracelet. The uranium glass bracelet. And this one. Okay, next up we have this gorgeous Kenneth J. Lane glass pearl necklace. 
Look at all these different colors. There's like a burgundy wine. Then you've got gold, you've got greens, you've got blues, you've got silver tone. It's on, um, there's a gold tone, lobster claw, closure at the end, a nice extender. And there's the jewelry tag with his initials, KJL. Looking at this, uh, let's, um, well, let me measure it first. It's about an eight and a half inch drop on this necklace. And then looking at this closer, you can see that it is hand knotted. And all the beads look, I mean, they have weight. All the beads look great, except I found one flaw. And it's on one of these. Yep, there it is. Um, there's a scratch. So there's a there's a one little boo boo on this necklace. Um, unfortunately, so we have this uh, Kenneth J. Lane. Next up, we have another Kenneth J. Lane necklace. This one here is silver tone, beautiful curb chain, and sections of it is filled with these pave crystal rhinestones. Uh, there is a sort of like a lifesaver clasp on this one. There is no extender. I'll show you where the maker's mark is in a moment. Let me measure the drop for you first. And this one has a drop of about eight inches. So now let me pick it up to show you. See all those crystals? This is beautiful. Um, yeah, this the silver tone portions do need to be wiped down. There is the lobster, no, not lobster claw, but there is this tag clasp. <laughs> And there is the loops that you would attach it to. And let me show you where the maker's mark is. It's actually on the link, KJL, right there. Inconspicuous, but what a necklace. This, the weight is substantial. Oh. Okay, for a second there, I thought it was double-sided, but no, no, no. Let me show you the back side. There's the back side. It's in really nice condition. And um, we have this. stunning piece. Okay, since I mentioned Joan Rivers, I have a couple more pieces by Joan Rivers, and look at this one. It's like an ice sculpture. <laughs> this is quite a statement necklace. These are faceted, large acrylic beads, and then you have these smaller ones going up the, the necklace. There is an extender with a little bead at the end and a lobster claw along with Joan Rivers' uh, jewelry tag up there. Let me measure the drop on this one and then I will lift it up to show you. It's about an eight inch drop. And now we can take a look at it. Wow, isn't this fun? Her jewelry is so well made. It is, it's breathtaking. This is pretty spectacular. Um, the chain is like a dark bronze tone. And here you see the lobster claw and there's her jewelry tag, Joan Rivers. So we have we have this one. 
Wow, wow, wow. And then, um, these are a copper tone. I love these loops. They, they're in different sizes, alternating. And they're just a fun layering piece. And this is also by Joan Rivers. And there is her jewelry tag. Very clean. These are, they look brand new. I have two of them. And um, there is a lobster claw closure and a long extender. So it's just fun. It's not super light, but they're not heavy at all. So let me measure the drop on this one. I have to move the ice sculpture back and see how long this one is. This one has a drop of 15 and a half inches. So we have this very fun hoopy necklace. And like I said, I have two. This is exactly the same. Also in pristine condition, there's her jewelry tag. Same extender with the bead. And just to be sure, I will measure this one as well. And yes, it is also 15 and a half inches. And okay, there are two size loops, hoops, uh, the bigger one and the smaller one. And then at the end of the necklace, it ends off with five smaller ones. So you have that at the top of your neck and then you have this design going down. So we could bring back this and we have these two. Joan Rivers. Next up, let's look at some costume rings. I mean, let's start off with this one. Look at that. This is like a, hmm, I would say a light amber tone, faceted rhinestone, and then there's clear rhinestones all around, and you even have two larger ones on either side. This is marked 14 karat, but it's not. And all those rhinestones are glass. And the size of this one, I would say is a seven. So we have this beauty. There's a little wear on the band. I'm hoping that can just be wiped off, but I think it's really very pretty. This next one, is a little lighter, more like a champagne color, oval with all these rhinestones all around it too. And there's even some on the band. This is a gold tone setting, and this is also magnetic, and the rhinestones are also glass. So let's find out what the size of this one is. And this one seems to be a size seven as well. And yeah, there is some wear on that band, but this is pretty spectacular. I think it's very nice. The next one, this is um, quite heavy. The band is thicker and um, there is the inside. This one has quite a high setting and it's filled with all these glass rhinestones. And they, yeah, I've tested everything for glass. And this one's a little smaller. This one, I would say is about a, it's about a five. So we have this very, very nice, pretty one. The next one is silver tone and it has a maker's mark and it says Emmons. See that? This is a vintage ring and it is adjustable, but look, has this beautiful prong set. I mean, how many prongs are there? And even the ones surrounding it. It's like an aquamarine colored glass. And the way it sits as is, 
the size is, let's see, I would say that's about a nine. Gorgeous, beautiful. Emmons blue, light blue glass. And it's a little domed. Yeah, it is domed. <laughs> I like this one. All right, next up, let's look at this group. Um, this one I want to test for sterling. This is Mark 925. This band is Mark 925. And this one here is a vintage uh, pearl ring that is marked 14 karat gold filled and this one has a purple stone it's silver tone uh let's see if this one is magnetic and it is yep but you know what let's test that purple stone because um it looks pretty nice it's a like a oval cut faceted stone and there's these two clear stones on either side of it so I have the gem tester ready. So let's see what this is. That's going to amethyst. That's nice. And the clear ones, I'm guessing glass. Yes. So this here is an amethyst ring with glass rhinestones on either side. Let's uh, let's measure this, and this one measures approximately um, a size seven. See there? Well, maybe seven and a quarter. No, I would say seven. I, I would say seven, and uh, yeah, it looks to be in good condition, and. Um, we have that. Okay, let's test these rings. Um, before I start, I wanted to show you what it says in this ring. Um, sovereign, 14, oh, I don't know if you can see that. 14K GF Shank. So, all right, let's take a scratch of this one. How about over here? And um, let me place 14 karat acid solution on this scratch and let that sit for a while. Oh, bubble, okay. We'll let that sit for a while, and then we can start testing the silver. Now, this one here was not marked. It's a very nice conch shell. Um, but to me, I don't know, something about it made me think that it could be sterling. So I'll take a scratch of that. This one here is Mark 925. It's a nice band. And one side of it has this um, scroll design. So let me take a scratch of that one. Okay, and then this one here is also marked 925 and it's just an open work, kind of like an oblong shape with a, a nice delicate design on the side and We'll take a scratch of that, if I can. This one is a little bit more thinner. Okay, well, all right. So here are the scratches. Let me place 18 karat acid solution on these scratches and see if they turn a bright blue. All right, in the meantime, 
Let's take a look at the gold one. Oh, the gold is holding steady. Okay. So this here is in fact um, 14 karat gold filled. Now, let's move on here. What do we see? I see bright blue. So this, yeah, this is sterling. And then this one is also, and this one here, um, yes, I do see blue flecks in it. So that the markings for 925 on these two are, are valid. Okay, first up we have this sterling silver conch shell ring. I have to say it's in pretty good condition. The, it, there's some weight to it too. I mean, it's kind of solid. There's a design on, on either side. So let's measure the size on this one. This one I would say is a six and a half. So we have this. Next up is this ring with the scroll design and that's what it looks like on the side. So let's measure the size of this one. This one is an eight. So we have, we have this ring. The next ring is this uh, wide band. I believe this is a seven and a half and it has this very nice scroll design on the front. Next up is this vintage um, pearl ring and that is a real pearl. And uh, this one is made by Sovereignge and this is a size Five and a, it's between five and a half and five and three quarters, but as you can see, it's adjustable. So as it sits, it's right there, and it is marked uh, 14K gold filled. We have that swirly design. It does need a cleaning, definitely needs a cleaning. So we have that one. These earrings are both post earrings and they're both marked 925. The pearl teardrop earrings uh, have a maker's mark on the back and it's a capital D written in cursive or script. And the ones on the bottom are marked 925 and they have this like a pink faceted glass rhinestone with all these little clear rhinestones all around and that's mark 925 as well so since i have the stone out let's test these these teardrop pearl earrings are faux but i wanted to show you um the marking there it is it's 925 and that d in cursive and then on the back it also has the same marking on here. And then with the glass studs, it does say 925 right there. And also on the on this back, that's part of this earring. I'm scratching the um pearl earring and then I'll even try to get this because that is mark 925 oh gosh this one's hard what a mess and then this one Bear with me, I'm so sorry I'm taking so long. And 
also the backing. Wow, okay. Those are the scratches. Let's put some acid solution on them and um, see what we have. Okay, those are fake, but these are not. Good to know. Okay, next item I want to show is this amazing set. This is a sterling silver amethyst necklace with matching leverback earrings. They are all the same size. So let me put the earrings down for a moment and show you the pendant. And it looks like a, I don't know, a vine because you do see the leaves, maybe grapes. There's the backside. It is marked 925. It is quite a high setting. It's on this very delicate chain that has a spring ring clasp at the end. And these earrings are exactly the same as the pendant with the same markings on the back. Where's the other one? Show you that one. And that same high setting. Beautiful amethyst. Leverbacks are marked 925. So let me measure the length of the necklace and then we will test. This set um, I obtained from, let's see, it was from Shop Goodwill. And this was, oh my goodness, this was uh, over a year ago. Um, the drop is about nine inches. So it's an 18 inch sterling silver chain with the spring ring class there is no extender so yeah let's test let's take the earring and scratch the the lever back and then the earring Okay, now let's take the chain. Let's see if I could scratch that whole thing with the spring ring. And the pendant. Where'd it go? Right here. All right, 18 karat acid solution. So tell me, do you mind if I test? Uh, I really want to show you what I'm selling so you know that is it is in fact what, what I say it is. Okay, it's bright blue. These scratches are very faint, but they do have bright blue flecks in them. So this is sterling. Okay, now to test the stones. Um, here's the pendant. It goes to amethyst. Yep. Very nice. Here's the earrings. Yes. Yes. And the second one. Uh, yes. Absolutely. And there you go. So here we have this beautiful sterling silver. I mean, these are gorgeous. 
I bet, you know, if you take it to a jeweler and have it steam cleaned or just polished, this will even have more fire than it, it's already showing. Okay, that's a wrap for my jewelry pop-up sale part one. Hey, you're probably wondering, this is not what you showed. Well, that's because this is a preview of what's coming up in part two. So if you enjoyed my video, please give me a thumbs up. That really does help with, I guess, a YouTube algorithm that I'm being told about. And comment, let me know what your favorite pieces were in part one. Uh, if there's anything you'd like to purchase, email me at dragonflybees at gmail.com. I have the instructions in, in the beginning of the video after my introduction, and I always put them below in the description box. I will also create a sold list, which will be pinned in the comment section. And that means when you go to the comment section, it will always be the first comment that you see. Also, please subscribe. That way you, you'll get in on these discounted rates only available for my subscribers. Ring the bell. And when you do so, another window pops up. Choose all notifications. That way you'll be alerted when I post part two and any other new content. And thank you, everyone, so very much for spending time with me today. And I'll see you soon. Bye.